can't storm the gates of hell by ourselves, amen? So uh, that's what we're here to do. Make sure you encourage one another. And uh, when Vinny's ready to go, we'll rock and roll. Let's get up. Let's stand up and praise the Lord. Father, we're so grateful to you today. You are so perfect and just and kind. And thank you for the wonderful meal. Thank you, Father, that you provide for our bodies. We ask, Lord, now, as you provide for our hearts and minds, as we lift our voices, that you would be with us that you would be uh, honored and glorified and that you would be pleased with us, Father.
All right, let's turn to Genesis 41. What time we got here? It's like 8.40, so I'll only go about an hour. <laughs> All right, Genesis 41. Um, we were doing this study the other day uh, with my kids and uh, just kind of stirred my heart, so I wanted to share this with you. Let me set some context here. Um, this is about Joseph. Joseph is probably the most Christ-like figure in all the Old Testament, right? Not perfect, but an exemplary figure of what Christ-like character should be like. And Joseph happens to never get to do what he wants to do. That sounds like all of us, right? I want this job, I want that life, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, right? Last night, like I kinda of wanted to, I've been going to the gym for like, like a week and a half, right? It's such a rarity that I was there and I, I, saw, I saw Jake, Jake Hensley. And Jake goes, are you lost? Do you know where you are? And I go, yeah, I think so. But why are you here? Like, are you lost? Right? That's like Great Rock Campus C over there. Everybody, ever, you've ever been to uh, Planet Fitness? And who, who goes to Planet Fitness? I've seen some of you guys, right? Yep. It's like, this is Campus A. The thrift store is Campus C and uh, B. And then the other one's Campus C, right? But listen. None of us ever get to do what we want to do. Man, you need to surrender to that, right? That sometimes your brothers will betray you. Your family will betray you. You will be sold into slavery. Sometimes you'll be doing really well. But where is Jesus and where is your heart? Jesus is always close, but where is your heart? And God starts to work, but are you ready? Are you cultivating a heart that wants God to work in your life. Work in your life. And we get to this point, and this is kind of the, the shining moment, right? He gets elevated. He's an interpreter of dreams, and he's about to come to not just Egypt's rescue, but the whole world because of his character, because of his obedience to God, because of who he is in Christ. He's going to shine. He's going to shine for God. Let's pick it up. Verse 46. It says, Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land. And now, in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abundantly. Remember, there's a dream that we're going to have. And he interprets it basically. They're going to have seven years of plenty, good farming, sun, irrigation, all that, more than enough. And then you're going to have seven years of famine. And so when Joseph gets elevated at 30 years old, he has to step up. He has to fill that position. That's what God's calling us to do. God's saying, hey, there might be a season of plenty for you, but are you ready? Are you ready? I've been asking myself this, you know, most of you guys here know I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to never, never land the plan of church, right? And I, and I kept praying for the Lord the last couple of years, especially the last year, I was like, Lord, it would just be a little easier if I just stuck around here a little bit longer, right? It would be easier if I was 45 minutes north and I could get all the help in the world. I can have a launch team. Pastor Matt, I know, will always help me. And it would just be easier. I'm thinking, okay, I could do this, right? And God's like, okay, but this is a little comfortable for you. Just like it's a little comfortable for you to be associate pastor here, right? It's a little easy for you. You're on cruise control sometimes. And we all do that. And in a season of plenty, I was able to reap. I was able to learn. I was able to do all these things. I'm, I'm always grateful that, that all the things that I got to do, I got to learn so much, right? In the 12 years I got to be a pastor here, I got to do so much. I got to do practical ministry, got to learn. Listen, I'm, I'm a big fan of you want to learn all you want to know, that's great. Read the textbooks, do the courses, Go to seminary if that's what God's calling you to do. We got a school of ministry here. Do that. All that stuff is good. But real ministry happens with real people. It's a heart-to-heart -heart thing. And unless you walk through that, you'll never really be in the ministry. And I knew. I knew years ago. The first time I was like, you know, you know how I know I'm in the ministry? Because I don't know. I never wanted to be a pastor. You know, Pastor Matt would ask me, like, you know, why don't you get up there and say a prayer? And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Why don't you go up there and teach a Bible study? I'm not that gifted. I don't want to do that. Right? You know, that's my wife. My first couple of years of teaching was like pulling teeth, right? But I knew. Because one night, 
I was so broken over this one young man that, that I toiled all night. I was in prayer all night for this kid. For this kid. Because he wasn't getting it. Because he wasn't being obedient. And he was, it was frustrating me. And I knew. I knew in the morning. Then I was like, God, is this what you feel like with us? Is this what you feel like? When you know that there's a chance to have plenty and we don't take advantage of that opportunity. Is this what breaks your heart? That's the ministry. That's the ministry, guys. And once you get there, it's great. But what are you going to do about it? How are you going to maximize what God is providing for you? There's many a blessings. Many a blessings. Most of us here, by the world standard, we're, we're the richest people in the world. And you might be like, hey, you haven't seen my bank account. I can turn my pockets inside out and you won't even see the pennies drop. But by the world standards, you have everything. You just got to eat. Do you know how many times sometimes in the ministry here we got to be like, hey, how do we get food to those people, those kids in Haiti? How do we get it to them, physically get it to them? Because that might be the only meal we get. So you guys didn't like the food this morning, you could go run out and get a bagel. You can go run out and get a coffee. You can go do whatever you want, right? We have all of that. What are we doing in the season of plenty? Right? And that's been the last five years for me. It's been a season of plenty. It's been a lot. It's been a lot going on. The church has grown. The church has done amazing things. And I was able to soak all of it up and feel ready, feel prepared. Now watch. It says here, So gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land in Egypt and laid up food in the cities. And he laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. And Joseph gathered much grain as the sand of the sea until he stopped counting, for it was immeasurable. It was immeasurable. Are God's blessings in your life immeasurable? The proverbial, is your glass half empty or is it half full? What is it? Can you count the blessings or is it just... This is the life you gave me, God. This is the woman you gave me. These are the bills that I have to pay, even though I'm the one who decided to, you know, get myself into this and pay all these bills because, you know, I over leveraged myself. What is it? The blessings. The blessings of fellowship. That you could look a brother in the, play, uh, in the face and say, hey, you know what? Could you pray for me? Could we sit and pray? That you can come and listen to the word of God. The blessings of that. The blessings that God has in store. They are immeasurable. And these storehouses are, should be in your heart. It's all about how you look at life. right? It's all about how you look at life. I've, uh, over the course of the last, um, I don't know guys, five years, five years, more and more, I, I've come across more and more wealthy people. I don't know why. None of them are helping me in any way. <laughs> but such is the case, right? Like just the job that I've worked, it just God has brought people who are millionaires and billionaires across my path. And I, and I look at every single one of them and I examine them and I go, like, because you just know, you know, they don't have Christ. And you're like, okay, God, like how am I going to, you know, try to minister to this person and you try to give them the gospel a little bit. But more importantly, you start looking at them and you're like, what's going on in your life that like $500 million is not enough? That you're still chasing after it. Right? One guy you know, it's not enough. Looking for the next thing. Looking for the next break. Looking for the, the next cutting edge thing so he can be a billionaire or a 10 billionaire or whatever. It, just craziness. And then I, I, I meet with some of, the, some of the guys in here and they feel the pressure of the world. Like I have to be successful. I have to do this. I have to do that. I'm like, you know once you give all that to Christ, it doesn't matter. He'll make all that happen anyway. He'll make all that happen anyway. But just carrying it and the burden, it's no good. But he stopped counting because the blessings were immeasurable. Do we see our lives that way? Do you have a son? Do you have a daughter? You step back, say, look at this, God, look at this. I'm in the midst of um, emptying out all my house and stuff and selling stuff and... Uh, you know, and there's, there's, I'm admittedly there's stress with that and whatever and just, you know, living, living in chaos and all that kind of stuff and living in a, 
uh, a time of uncertainty, because that's all we want. Everybody here, all you guys really want is certainty, right? You want certainty in your bank, you want certainty in your marriage, you want certainty with your kids, you want certainty in your job. We want certainty in the ministry here, right? God, give us the parking lot. We want certainty. That's all we want. That's, all we want. That's, that's not faith, by the way. Certainty is not faith. You'll never get that. And the more you have it, the more you'll rely on your own flesh for it. The more you'll try to do it yourself. But in the midst of all that, God just kind of stopped me today. He goes, you know, you, you got all this stuff going on. You got all this craziness going on. And you're trying to spend time with me, which is great. But I'm like, have you spent any time with your family? I'm like, God, what are you talking about? I'm at the dinner table. I'm at the dinner table more than I used to be. Yeah, but you know what I'm doing at the dinner table? So my kids, we got them all in one room. I got the mattresses on the floor. And, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm working and, you know, I work, I work some odd hours, so I work from 10 to 1 in the in, uh, evening. And um, God just kind of stops and he goes, you know, you got your kids in one room, you know. They're all little. Why don't you go spend some time with them? Why don't you see that your blessings are immeasurable? Best 45 minutes I've had in years. Put my computer down, turned off the TV, and I just went in there and laughed with them. Played with them, right? Do you know what that cost me? Nothing. Nothing. And God spoke to me, because as I was working, because I, I do, I work in the evenings. I, I kind of have to. I have to keep going. I have to keep going. I have to start keep figuring things out. And I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. And God spoke to me, clear as day. He spoke to me. And I, and I was sitting there fighting with the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, I can't afford to lose these three hours. I will be so far behind if I do this, Lord. I can't afford to lose these three hours. And I fought with him for 10 minutes, looking at a blank screen, not being productive. You know what he said? He says, you can't afford to not spend time with your kids. That's what you can't afford. Are the blessings immeasurable in your life? Can you see them? Those of you guys who are fighting with your wives today, do you see that? you see that? These are you guys who don't want to come out to prayer meetings and, you know, men's breakfast and all that. You're all here, obviously. But can you see that the blessings are already there? They're already there. They're already there. Having pastors that care about you, having men that care about you, having women who are along, coming alongside of you, having women who are going to serve, the blessings are already there. Look at this place. Look at this place. I was around. We had 25 people meeting in a hotel. Right? Stacking chairs. It's like stacking chairs. And it was great. And then I see now, I'm like, hey, you know what? We don't stack chairs anymore. I mean, we kind of do sometimes, but we don't have to stack chairs anymore. And sometimes they get crazier on you. I'm like, man, everything's operational. We got to do this. We got to do that. Da, 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 da. Sunday morning is like crazy, right? Because we have 18 million ministries. And then God's like, are the blessings immeasurable or are they a burden on your life? That's a hard issue. But God always provides. Just not in the way you think. And then I love this. And Joseph, and to Joseph were born two sons. Before the years of famine, who Eshnath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him, Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. Interesting. This comes at a time of blessing that God has made me forget the troubles. Made me forget. Paul would put it this way. You reach forward for the prize in Jesus Christ. You forget all the things that are behind and you reach forward. You reach forward. That's the Christian life. Oh, I screwed up again yesterday, God. I said this. I said that. You keep moving. You keep moving. You keep doing the right thing every day. You know what happens when you do that? You forget the things that are behind. And you move forward. So many times we get destroyed in our minds because we're just thinking, oh, it's going to be like this and I have fear and I have no certainty in my life. And you go backwards. And you never build. You never build. I learned a few things this, this last couple months. 
This is what I learned. Always learn. It's great. This is what I learned. You have to learn to say no to certain things. Sins, temptations, thoughts in your mind, sometimes even the things that are good but that aren't great and that aren't of the Lord, you have to learn to say no. You have to start to learn to say no. You have to have some conviction to be able to say, I'm not going to do that. Joseph lived his life saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sin against God. I'm not going to cheat with this boss's wife. I'm not going to connive my way into getting out of this prison. I'm going to offer the truth when he was in prison. I'm going to help this guy out, and I'm going to say, hey, remember me, but I'm not going to make it happen myself. I learned that. You know what else I learned? You need to learn to remove temptation. Learn to remove temptation. You want to know how to forget the things that are bothering you? You need to remove those things. I eat chocolate in my cabinet. I do. I'm not crazy about it. But the effects, you know what the effects of chocolate are? It makes you feel so good. But I'm kind of at that age where, uh, one, I can't keep eating that stuff because I, I just keep getting bigger and bigger and that wasn't any good. But it doesn't like, it was starting to like give me indigestion, right? You eat too much like chocolate. This is, these are issues like none of the teenagers have. You can eat whatever you want and just digest it all, right? But it was starting to give me indigestion. But then it's like, it's like madness. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm eating this stuff, and it makes me feel bad. The sugar's going through my veins, and I, I'm just, I can't sleep all night because I got indigestion. So then I'm popping, you know, I'm popping the, uh, the, the antiacids like it's going out of style, right? It's like candy, and I'm popping them into my mouth, and in the middle of the night, I'm, 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 it tastes all chalky, and then you're drinking water, then you got to go to the bathroom, and it's like perpetual, endless cycle of human torture, right? Me and my chocolate drama here. And you can purpose in your mind all you want to say, hey, you know what, I'm not going to eat that anymore. Not just because the doctor told me not to, but I'm going I'm, I'm to purpose in my mind. But you know what happens when it's in your home? Ooh. 11 o'clock comes around, you're like, ooh. Right? Yeah. Ooh. You walk to buy that cabin, like, mm, wife's not looking. No one's around. <laughs> get a little stronger. You go, mm, I'm going to stare at you for a little while. A little stare down, right? Then you really label. It's not that bad, you know. If I eat two, I guess, you know, it's not too many calories. Then you just undo everything you just did. You ate veggies today. You worked out today. Right? You just undid all that because you couldn't remove the temptation. That's a silly example. It's chocolate. How many of us, right, right, I didn't have an impure thought today, oh, good, remove the temptation, then you talk yourself out of it, it's no big deal, everybody sins, everybody does it, then you blame God, God, why is it so readily available, why is everything just out there for me? Why is it that I'm watching something on Sports Center and this? Why is it a YouTube clip and then? Uh... You gotta remove it. God has made me forget all my toil. Forget all my toil. And then he says this in my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful. In the land of my affliction, in affliction, in suffering, God has caused me to be fruitful. Your suffering matters. The way you go through things matter. This is how you become fruitful in Christ. That's not the way the world works. The world says, hey, ignore the pain. We'll medicate it. We'll treat it. We'll make you feel good about it. We'll craft a program around it. We'll excuse it. We'll tell you you have a disease. It's sin. But in your affliction, God is fruitful. He will cause it to be fruitful. This is why nobody comes to church and wants to hear a sermon from a pastor who's like, hey, look how wealthy I am. You know why people love coming here? Because we just tell you, hey, look how we're struggling. In my affliction... 
I have no problem telling you guys, hey, it's rocky. It's rocky. I have faith, but it's rocky. Wish the housing market was doing a little bit better so then I know I can clear an extra 30 grand. Probably not going to happen. Love to tell you that I don't have plumbing issues in my house. Not going to happen. Love to tell you that I got a, a job for a year. Not going to happen. Coincidentally, or not, because it's called God, right when I'm moving, I'm going to be looking for either the same job or a different job. Crazy. You would think that, hey, you know what? You're going to go do something for the Lord. Red carpet's going to roll out, right? Somebody already asked me, like, oh, you got a building going? I'm like, building? Dude. I'm like, I'm literally serious. It's me and my Bible and at least my wife and her guitar. Like, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I'm going to do. I'm told the other guys the other day, I met with the deacons and trainers. I was like, you know, the minute I step foot out of this place, then I'm no longer Pastor Jin. And that may mean something to you. And if I show back up, you might be like, hey, Pastor Jen, how you doing? Love you. Good to see you. But if I have no flock, or I have no flock that God has given unto me to be able to shepherd for him, I'm no longer a pastor. But in my affliction, and that's a small affliction, guys. In my affliction, God's going to add fruit. That's the faith. That's the faith. And I'm not intimidated at all by pastors who get millions of dollars in funding and this and that and whatever. Because you know what? I got your prayers and I got Pastor Matt's support. That's all I need. And he'll help me. He's already promised to help me in any way he can. But it's real. It's not easy. Like I, was, I sat up there on Wednesday night and I was, um, I was so happy that PM was just like, hey, we got to pray with our family. And, and it just happened. Usually I don't get to sit with my wife a lot during service. Um, but it was just the two of us up there. Because um, I'm just trying to get a feel for what the service looks like up there. And I was up there and she was... And, uh, and it just kind of, you know, forgetting the things, going ahead, and, and the suffering. And I was like, Lord, I don't see it as affliction. But Lord, I'm going to miss not being here. I'm going to miss not being here. Like, it's painful. It's painful. But such is the case. This is the way God has chosen to move in my life. It's painful. But it's okay. I know he's going to use it. And if I can see that the blessings are immeasurable, and I can see that God's going to use that, that he's going to help me forget those things, and he's going to move me on. Move me on. That doesn't mean I move on from you guys. I'm just going to have a heart for this place. I, I, I was thinking about all these things. Like I'm, When I first came into the ministry here, again, guys, I never wanted to do ministry. It wasn't my thing. I was just obedient to the Lord. That's all it really required, just a little bit. And I remember thinking, I remember we used to have these conversations and um, um, I think it was years ago, we, we went to this training facility, um, missions training facilities in the Bahamas and, and the pastors that were encouraged, it's like, you know, every man here should be discipling a man once a year. And that's true. That's true for all of you, by the way, whether you're light years ahead or whether you're just like, hey, I just got saved like a year ago. What do I do? But I was thinking about this, and uh, for a little while, there was a season in my life, because I try to do that. Some, some seasons it's more guys, some seasons it's less. But all I do is just open the Bible and teach them how to read it and just see how they're doing, right? And for, for a little while, I was still, um, I was still like in my, probably in my early 30s, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, God brought me Daryl Mitchell and Anthony Roberto. Like, Anthony Roberto is like 45 years old, and Daryl's 55 years old, and I'm like 30. And I'm like, what do I got to offer these guys? They've done much more in life. They've been through the seasons. What am I going to do? And God's like, just teach them the Bible. And I'm like, all right, Lord, I'll just teach them the Bible. And that's it. That's it. Blessings. Simplicity. Moving forward, right? Fruitfulness. Bear fruit. The idea of being a Christian is that you are planted by living waters, and then you bear fruit. And guess what? God uses that, but other people benefit from the fruit. You don't benefit from it yourself. Let's close up. Then the seven years of plenty 
which were in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said. The famine was in all the lands, but in all of Egypt there was bread. He'd been smart. He'd learned. He'd stored this up. Going off the blessings, right? Going off the blessings here. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread, and the Pharaoh said to all of Egypt, go to Joseph, whatever he says, you do. By the way, there's a blessing in this, right? For years, I was at my job, for years, and I just, I was being tortured, right? I was being told to do things, and, then, and I just kind of kept my eyes down, and I just said, I'm just going to keep working, keep working, keep working, keep working. Years would go by, and you know what happened? Because I had at least a little bit of Christian character. Do you know what happens when you do that? Then they go, oh, you're a reliable guy. So for, for the last five years, you know what my boss does? He goes, yeah, go talk to Jin. Go talk to Jin. You get blessed when you do it God's way. When you surrender to it. When you start not living your life a certain way and living your life a certain way that you're supposed to, there's blessings. Not just for you, but for everybody else. And the longer you run from that, the longer you run from that, it's a harder lesson to learn. And the famine was all over the face of the earth, and Joseph opened the storehouses, sold to the Egyptians, and the famine became severe in the land, and all the countries came to Joseph to buy the grain because the famine was severe in all the lands. It's interesting. I'll close with this, guys. God knows everything, right? Knows everything that's going to happen. He's orchestrated all these things. It's interesting. God wants to use this man, not just for him, not just to bring his family back together, which he does if you surrender to him. But you know what else he does, right? He orchestrates this so that all of Israel, who would have intermingled with the people where they were, because they were small people, he brings them up, they have a nice season, even through the famine, and then God multiplies them, and God multiplies them, and God multiplies them, right? And some 400 years goes by before the pharaohs have forgotten about all this and Israel's torture. But you know, even in their suffering there, that's how God works. Because he unifies that nation. Now I want to say this to you, as a brotherhood, right? Because there are going to be times where you don't get along with one another. There are going to be times where you don't like somebody else in the ministry. There's going to be times where you're like, I can't stand the pastor. There's going to be times. This happens around here probably every, every 45 seconds, right? It's probably happened three times this morning, right? But in the midst of your suffering, if you stick with it, God's going to raise up an army. Raise up an army. If you stick with it, stick with it. The ups and the downs. We all want to be around in the ups and we all want to abandon everything we're doing when we're down. Is that not how it is? But God is good in the ups and the downs. Always has been, always will be. You need to learn to stick it out. You need to learn to finish. Finish the things that you started in your season, right? So if you started a fast, finish the fast. If you made a promise to a brother you're going to pray with him, finish it. If you made a promise to serve, finish it. You might not do it your whole life, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. And do it in the seasons where it doesn't feel like you want to do it. There's a lot of things I don't feel like doing. I tell you, I don't feel like church planning right now. It's not really all that great. But there's fruitfulness to it. And then you have to surrender the fact that you have no control over any of this. You're never going to get certainty. Don't live for certainty. Amen? Amen? Don't live for certainty. All right. Let's do this. We're going to have a couple brothers play. Pray, sorry. And then I'm going to have, where's Vinny? Vinny, if you want to come back up, I love that song. Let's sing Amazing Grace. Um, let's do this. Milt Hamilton, are you here, sir? You're usually here. Where are you? All right. Milt. Why don't you stand, pray for us, and then I'll have a couple other guys pray, and then, and then we'll sing.
living God, who has blessed us thoroughly with this church, with this fellowship, with the Holy Spirit, with the blood of Jesus. I pray that blood be poured out on every man's soul here, Father God. Whatever he's coming against, we know that you're greater than it. Yeah. And you are a God of abundance, and you supply everything we need. Just like it said in Second Peter, Father, we thank you for it. We pray, and we just believe and trust by faith you get good things ahead for every single guy here. That he would walk by faith and not by sight. Hmm. And to be a leader in his home, to be light to a dark and dying world, Father. I pray a special blessing over anybody that has the courage and the faith to stand up and for what is right in their workplace, in their home, amongst their relatives and friends and their neighbors, Lord. The true and living word of God will not come back void if they just stand on it. I pray that for everyone here. We thank you, Father, for all the souls gathered. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's a lot. There you are. Why don't you pray for us, Mary? Lord God, we are just, uh, we are humbled. We stand in awe before the throne of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who knew us by name before creation began. And loved us so much, he sent his son to pay the penalty for our sins. And Lord, we thank you for that. We are overwhelmed. We are silenced. And yet we also raise our hands in praise and thanksgiving. We honor your name above all names. We thank you for the work that you've begun in our lives. That you saw fit to save us, to call us, to draw us into your presence. On bended knee we don't even deserve to look into your presence, to come into your presence, and yet you welcome us, allowing us to call you Daddy. You smile when we come into your presence. You welcome us with open arms. All heaven rejoices at the salvation of a sinner. Lord, we thank you for salvation that you alone did, and you paid the price. Lord, as men, we fall so far short of what we have and what the world has, but you love us, you cleanse us, you lift us up, you equip us, you fill us, you renew us, you rebuild us, you mold us. We are nothing without you, Lord. And so we ask, Lord, that you will continue to indwell us with your spirit. Revitalize us, renew us, re-strengthen us. Help us to gird our loins again one more day for another battle. Help us to put on the armor not to neglect little things, but to pay attention to the divine appointments all around us. Help us to be mindful of your presence, Lord. Help us not to be overcome by the world and distracted and torn down, but help us to be built up and strengthened, shoulder to shoulder on the wall, filling in the gap. We pray this only in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Hi, Go ahead. Lord, we just uh, thank you so much. Lord, as uh, my brothers are praying just for saving us, Lord, and that we have abundant blessings laid up for us in heaven, Lord, no matter what we go through in this lifetime. Lord, I pray you give everybody here an eternal perspective, Lord, that you're the only one worth living for. Lord, that... Um, you know, we have things in this life that are important that we need to tend to, Lord. But if we forget you in the midst of it, it's all worthless. So, Lord, I pray that we would be obedient men and we would love you, Lord, with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul. Lord, we'd love one another. We'd love our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, I thank you so much for putting my brothers here beside me, Lord. I thank you so much for Pastor Jim and all that he's poured into our lives, Lord, and the wisdom and encouragement from your word. Lord, thank you for Anthony Roberto and his leadership, Lord, and his hospitality. God, thank you for everybody here, Lord. I pray, God, that you would knit us closer together by your spirit, Lord. Lord, give us more faith in your word, to believe your word, to believe in your provision, to believe in your wonder-working power that can work through us, Lord, to believe 
this gospel, Lord, and to lose our life for the gospel, Lord. God, break our hearts, like Pastor Jim was saying, for people, Lord, that we would be up in the middle of the night praying and toiling in prayer, Lord, for lost souls, Lord, for people who are going through struggles, Lord. Give us uh, a deeper desire to go deeper in prayer, Lord, and um, intercede for one another and to get on our faces and pray for the lost, Lord. Lord, bless everybody going out here and uh, humble us, Lord, before your presence, God, because you're a holy and mighty God, and we do not deserve to be in your presence, but we're thankful, Lord, that you receive us, Lord, and we don't deserve anything, but you give us everything, and we thank you for that, Lord. Fill us with your spirit, in Jesus' name. Pastor Jim, <laughs> yeah. um, I came up to you last Sunday, too, and told you about my nightmares that I've been having, and, and a lot of the gentlemen were here yeah, last Saturday, you. and you weren't here, and all laid hands on me and prayed over me, and I just thank you again for all the blessings, and it even made me realize more this morning when I came in, and the guys would come up and say, how was your week, how are your dreams, how are your nightmares? It means so much, and, and you know, there's a reason why I'm going through some of that yet also, and I don't know why. And I also happened to find a Bible that my daughter gave me. She'd always been trying to get me to the Lord. She gave me in 1994 for my birthday. And I happened to be going through something. I saw something in a box, and I opened it up, and I said, my goodness, that's how many years my daughter had been praying, praying for me to come to the Lord. And when I told her what I found, if I didn't end up in Great Rock Church, I don't know where I'd be, guys. There, there will be fruit. In your affliction. That's oh, all yes. I want to share. Thank you. All right, Vinny, let's, God let's, bless. I love that song. I haven't sang it in forever. Let's just sing our hearts out, okay? Let's do that. Uh, <laughs> on your feet. Yes, <laughs> Attention. <laughs> and, I, and I had a chance to tune up. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing grace. I'll Here, Lord, is so strong, so mighty, God. And 
That's because we're humbled, Lord, by you and your presence, Lord. We're humbled by the work that you do in our lives, Lord, in spite of us, Lord. And we're humbled by the fact that you can magnify everything we do, Lord, more so than we can do in our flesh ever. And Father, help us to uh, store our treasures in heaven. Help us to encourage and love one another continually, Lord, to bear with one another. Help us to correct one another in the word gently. And Father, Father I just ask for your blessings to continue on, Lord. Immeasurable, immeasurable blessings. Uh, and we thank you. In the Lord's name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, God bless you guys.